Sadly, there is no silver bullet to achieve a responsive and lag-free gaming experience. The reality is that you remove 5 milliseconds here, another 10 milliseconds there, and eventually you get the system latency as low as it can possibly be. One element in the end-to-end -end latency of your system is the keyboard, which even though we use it to trigger time-sensitive abilities and move our character through the game world, is somehow underappreciated when it comes to its impact on how responsive a game feels. In one of my last videos I tested several gaming keyboards including two models from EVGA which support a polling rate of up to 4 kHz. But despite that high polling rate they did not manage to beat my old Corsair K70 Rapid Fire which doesn't go faster than 1 kHz. If you want to learn more about how I test the input lag of keyboards then please check out the video I linked to in the description as I will not explain it again today. So, as I said, the Corsair K70 Rapid Fire, which I bought back in 2018, showed the lowest delays in my tests. Today we will see if the new K70 RGB TKL Champion Series and the K100 RGB can further increase their lead in my tests, as they use Corsair's new Exxon Hyper Processing technology. Full disclaimer, Corsair sent me review units of their keyboards ahead of their official release, but they did not pay me to make this review. So this is not a sponsored video. Now, what is that Exxon Hyper Processing technology? Simply put, the chip inside the new K70 and the K100 scans the keys 4000 times per second. So internally the keyboard works at 4000 Hz. Inside the IQ software you can then set how frequently your PC pulls the keyboard to get an update on which key has been pressed. Even though the keyboard internally scans the keys 4000 times per second, you can also choose a polling rate of 8000 Hz. That will only have a minor impact on the delays though, as it will just help with those edge cases where a key is pressed right after the keyboard has been pulled by Windows. So to set our expectations, at a polling rate of 1000 Hz there is 1 millisecond between updates. At 4 kHz the time between updates is reduced to 0.25 milliseconds. And at 8 kHz we have 0.125 milliseconds between updates. But keep in mind that internally the Exxon chip always scans the key switches 4000 times per second, regardless of which polling rate you select. It should also be mentioned that choosing a very high polling rate can have a negative impact on systems with a weak CPU. It is also recommended to directly connect such a high polling rate device directly to one of the USB ports on your mainboard and not use a USB hub or third party PCIe to USB adapter. Now let's take a look at the results of my first test where I triggered the key press directly on the PCB of the keyboard, which means that the key switch is not a factor here. Again, please check out the video link to in the description where I explain in detail how my testing method works and why this specific test is currently limited to keyboards with mechanical key switches. With an average delay of 3.69 milliseconds, the K70 Rapid Fire has much less delay than EVGA's Z15. And that is quite impressive considering that the Z15 supports a polling rate of 4 kHz. At a polling rate of 1000 Hz the new K70 is already slightly faster than the older Rapid Fire model. Switching to a polling rate of 4 kHz further decreases the delays slightly, while a polling rate of 8 kHz barely affects the delays. But that was expected as internally the Exxon chip scans the keys 4000 times per second and choosing a higher polling rate doesn't change that. Now let's move from Sol to CSGO. For this test I use a linear solenoid to press the key, which means that the delay of the key switch is included here. So with the monitor set to a refresh rate of 144Hz and CSGO running at 144fps, the new K70 beats the old K70, the Z15 and Z20 from EVGA, the K7 from ASUS and the Wooting One. That said, the key switches of the Z20, K7 and Wooting One have a slightly longer actuation distance, so that must be considered here. But more on that later. When I increase the polling rate on the new K70 to 4 kHz and then 8 kHz, then this has only a very minor impact on the delays at a refresh rate of 144 Hz and 144 FPS. Now let's see how the K100 performs, which uses Corsair's OPX optical key switches. Like the new K70 it beats every other keyboard I tested, and increasing the polling rate to 4 kHz and then 8 kHz only slightly reduces the delays further. 
For the next test I increased the refresh rate of the monitor to 360Hz and the frame rate to 500fps in CSGO. Now the higher polling rate of 4000Hz leads to the expected system latency reduction. And going to 8kHz doesn't do much as it just helps with the edge case where a key press is detected after a pull from the operating system occurred. And the same is true for the K100 RGB as you can see here. Now you can get the K70 RGB TKL with Cherry MX Speed as well as Cherry MX Red Switches, where the red switches have a longer actuation distance. But how does that affect the delay? Since I use a linear solenoid to press the key with the exact same speed every time, we can put these switches up against each other. At 1kHz the average delay is 1.2 milliseconds longer with the red switch. The same is true at a polling rate of 4kHz as well as at 8kHz. Moving to a refresh rate of 360Hz and CSGO running at 500fps, the delays are lower overall. But the red switches again increase the average delay by a little bit more than 1 millisecond. So if you prefer the feel of the Cherry MX red switches over the speed switches, then you don't have to worry that these increase the input lag by much. While the longer actuation distance of the red switches might help to avoid accidental key presses. Also, even at the polling rate of just 1kHz, the new K70 RGB TKL and the K100 RGB are the fastest keyboards I've tested so far, which shows that there is more to the input lag of a keyboard than just the raw polling rate and the actuation distance of the key switches. So if you are looking for a keyboard which has very low input lag, then both the new K70 as well as the K100 keyboards from Corsair are a great choice. And that's it for today. I want to thank my fine patrons for their awesome support, which allows me to come up with new test methods and produce content that as far as I'm aware of, you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more, ring the bell to get notified when I upload my next video, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.